Let's see the limit laws in action and learn about a few basic methods that will allow us to find algebraic limits. What's an algebraic limit? It's a limit where x approaches a of f of x, where f of x is now given by an algebraic expression. Well, what's an algebraic expression then, I hear you ask? It's a finite combination of these symbols, the variable x and the basic arithmetic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, raising to integer exponents or taking nth roots. Here are some examples of algebraic limits and the basic me uh, methods I mentioned involve direct substitution where if you are lucky uh, evaluating the function at x equals a gives you a sensible answer and then that's your limit and it is guaranteed by the limit laws themselves. If you're not lucky and you end up with f of a giving you for example 0 over 0 which is undefined then you may try factoring. So you get 0 over 0 when you plug in x equals a so that's an indication that there might be uh, factors of x minus a in your expression which you perhaps need to extract, collect and then cancel them all to end for, so that you end up with a simpler expression where direct substitution should work. Your expression might involve uh, some square roots and um, if direct substitution does not work right away try and multiply, it by, multiply your expression by a funny look looking factor of 1 which involves, involves the, the, what's called the conjugate of your original expression divided by itself. Notice the sign flip. So this expression is equivalent to the previous one a plus root b itself but it might lead to some simplification and then direct substitution could work. Okay, if none of these previously mentioned methods work, then try and combine some terms in your algebraic expression, hoping that it will lead to some simplification and then some of the previously mentioned method, methods might work. If uh, your function is a piecewise defined function with the different pieces being all algebraic expressions, perhaps different ones, and A is a point where two of these pieces meet, then of course you would be using one-sided limits but to find and evaluate those one-sided limits you would be using one of these methods ideally. Okay, time for some questions. Evaluate uh, the following limit by using the appropriate method that I showed you before. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and I realized that here direct substitution works great. Plugging in x equals 9 gives you 8 plus root 9 so 8 plus 3 that is 11 and that's the limit. Next question Again, evaluate the limit by finding the appropriate method. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you pause it and I realize that direct substitution won't work in this case because plugging in x equals negative 3 gives you 0 over 0, but that means that there are these factors of x plus 3. Uh, so, of course, the denominator itself is, a, is x plus 3. So it's the numerator that we need to factor, collect the fact factors of x plus x plus 3 there. Uh, if you factorize the numerator you get x plus 3 times x minus 1. You can check it by expanding the parentheses. Um, and then we can cancel all of these problematic factors leaving us with x minus 1 where direct substitution works. Plugging in x equals negative 3 gives you negative 3 minus 1 that is negative 4. Let's look at the next question. Okay, um, again pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it. And I've realized that in this case, again, you get 0 over 0 if you plug in x equals 0. So um, direct substitution won't work, but there's the square rooted expression in the denominator. So try, let's try to use conjugates by taking the conjugate of the denominator, which is flipping this negative sign and writing the expression square root of x plus 1 plus 1 divided by itself. So with this way I'm not changing the expression, it's still equivalent to what it was. But in the denominator now we have a minus b times a plus b. So a squared minus b squared is what we should get. The numerator I just uh, write it, leave it unchanged. And then in the denominator I need to take the square of the square root of x plus 1, so that's x plus 1, and subtract from it the square of 1 so then 1 minus 1 here cancels and we are left with a common factor of x in the numerator and denominator. Cancelling those leaves me with an expression which, uh, for which direct substitution works great. Plugging in x equals 0 gives me root 1 plus 1 which is 2. Let's look at the next question. Okay, um, try to evaluate the limit by using the appropriate method. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have realized that again plugging in x equals 1 gives you 0 over 0. 
Uh, there are no square roots um, and also there is this x to the negative 1 there so let's try to combine those factors in the in the denominator because we have in the denominator x minus x to the raised to the negative first power so that's 1 over x you can write it like that let's combine those terms in the denominator if we do that the common denominator of a, um, x will lead us leave us with x squared minus 1 over x then we may cancel the x squared minus 1 factors leaving us with 1 over 1 over x so that's just x and then direct substitution gives us uh, the limit 1. Okay I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.